in-game. We are loading in, folks. Apologies again about the delays. CTF on Bazaar. It is a very hectic kind of map. Four years since the last ANZ LAN event, but here we are, DreamHack 2022. Everything on the line. Biggest event in ANZ Halo history. We're gonna be running straight into it. And these players, they've been waiting, they're hyped up. We've had the storylines. Scrims are over. Panda, take it away. It's time to set the bar. Mind freaking Chiefs coming into it already off the rip. We see aggressive moves being made. Straight up looking for the spanker right now, trying to get it in hand. They do. Chiefs walk away with it and it goes to work already. They've lost two. They claim one back. They're looking for more, but unfortunately, Berserk goes down. They do. Those rockets use utilized very early on on board with Berserk right now. I like that. Not taking fights too too hard just there went waited for his teammates got the shields moving into the bar area now they are kind of pushed up against their base we've already got a flag out panda yeah on the run and this is a map where it's not just a straight run it's never clean you've got to do a bit of extra work to make sure that run gets on through junior looking to contest trying to get his flag back in the platform slays goes down he's looking to get some control a double for him as Madzi falls as well they're trying to deny the recapture here they don't want it moving forward beast and he's gonna find one falls and Junior's doing great work holding this off. Yeah, absolutely. Now, still with Junior here, there was question marks. What kind of Junior were you going to get? Is he going to be practiced in fine form? We already saw dude is dropping plenty of kills. Pretty tasty little double kill there. Now, moving through. There's a flag out bottom mid right now, but it's very scrappy. Ninjistics with the flag on the move. He's straight through the double doors. Are we going to see the first flag cap go in? Looks a bit uncontested at the moment. Full shield, slams it in, and we've got the first flag cap of the event. Massive stuff for Mind Freak. They look to establish a lead early. They're not going to slow down, though. Dino already in the hunt through market. Wants to try and cut off this rotate through mid. Madzi there as well. But unfortunately, Slay's not quick enough. No, that team help came just a little bit too slow. But it's an overkill for Slazy. Already the first one of this event. Now moving into the base. Dino off the respawn there, doing what he can to hold Slazy back. But are you going to be, be able to hold someone back when he's coming off the back of an overkill like that? But Beast and, and Berserk there, ready the buddy system, that flag across the map. They're very dominant in this run, a little bit of a fumble, but no, he's turning around to make sure they can get it. So many grenades going in, Panda. I mean, this is insane. We've already had an overkill. This is the first map of the first series, and it's already this hyper-aggressive style of Halo that we've come to know in ANZ, running it through. It looks like we might get that deep run here from the Chiefs. Up the jump, up onto the platform. We're tied up at 1 1. Tied up, that's what you want to see. So much intensity. You would think maybe they'll start off a little bit slow as they feel each other out, but no, they were so ready to just jump straight into it. Two flag caps already. Now with another flag on the move, a little sliver of that overshield. And as I say that, it's been melted away, but still hasn't been touched. He's moving that flag through essentially for free, but he does pause the market, grabs a couple of shock nades. Father Benji doing what he can to stop that flag. Here comes the clap, shuts down Junior Berserk, what a play. That flag still out in the open, they lose three, the respawn's coming through, now it's try and deny the reset here out of mind. Freak Ninjastic finds himself alone against Madzi. They are trying to get that ground taken back, but for the moment, it's just that again, war of attrition, battle through market, constant non-stop slogging, but with the span corrupt, that could all change. Yeah, you gotta get that noob tube out, there's two there to play with. Father Benji grabbing that one, sneaking away very cleanly too, didn't have a lot of pressure a prediction rocket comes out doesn't connect though but you see those red markers the chiefs coming through benji finds one but gets called out instantly deleted he's got one to 50 percent efficiency rate but you look at just streaming on towards that mind freak flag platform they're trying to mount the resistance but look it's a bit of a ring around the rosy mind freak might have to cut off from the back junior finds himself dead relegated to watching his teammates as mads he establishes control of the mind freak side of the map yeah, on board with the Shark going 6-6 six and six right now. But it looks like consistent slays across both teams. No, no team kind of dominating the other. They're very even. Steven right now, not just in the flag cap. Slaying ability to Junior caught out a little bit there. Now, Madzi moving through, getting the flag, going through the palm. Not stopping to check out the scenery there, going it across. And he's got help. These Chiefs guys, every time they're moving that flag, Panda, they always have their buddies right there with them. Chiefs looking to return to that form they established in stage one without barcode. And they are going to run it through their own doors. But with their flag out in play, they can't score this. It's going to be a swap. Yeah, got the old classic standoff. 
and that fresh overshield in the hands of Slays. We already saw an overkill for him. Now he's got an extra buffer of extra shields. Look at this, Clucks pushing in. Chief's going for blood. Junior didn't even get out of the spawn, just gets shut down. Another eight seconds waiting, waiting to spawn up for you, mate. Moving through, another flag on the move. It was only a few seconds ago that they had one in. Yeah, I mean, they were able to return it. They get the caps through. It was already in place. Now, look at this is the most uncontested flag run I've ever seen. Yeah, he's going through, but Slays, he's doing the OBJ. When did he have time to get 12 kills? This man can do it all. And that's three to one in favor of the Chiefs. Massive stuff. A 3-1 lead is something that you don't always see on Bazaar. Usually it just stalls out. It's about the clock rather than the flag caps. Benji does get the better of Slays. Shuts down some of this oppression that the Chiefs have been dishing out. And the game will slow. And this is what Mind Freak want. They want to slow down the play. Yeah, I mean, CTF Bazaar, sometimes it can be a bit of a slog, but, you know, maybe the Chiefs are just being super efficient with the opportunities that come to them. You know, sometimes they're not quick enough, and it's like, two dead, push up, two dead, push up, two dead, get the flag out. They seem to be very on top of those things and moving as a unit. Well, I mean, that's the thing. On all of the CTF maps in Halo Infinite, it's not just a case of get flag, go to base. It's get kills, get flag, get kills, go to base, get kills, and then capture. So the Chiefs, the fact that they've got three already is rather impressive. Very impressive indeed. Speaking of impressive, Father Benji doing a lot of work for the Mind Freak boys. He's currently top fragging and top assisting, and now he's got that flag on the move as well. Now, Chiefs, they're up 3-1 at the moment with, with the flag moving. Benji looking hot. They're certainly not out of this just yet. Another spanker in play, Benji with Junior covering and that overshield trying to be the difference maker between the flag and Chiefs right now. Junior goes no. down without shooting the spanker. So two rockets available. Beaston has them in hand and Chiefs are making moves. They just swept them up, didn't they? There was three players up from Mind Freak. Junior had the overshield and then we just saw those red players come in from the Chiefs and just shut down that flag run immediately. Now with Berserk, sorry, Madzi on screen going 14 and eight currently. The Shark certainly hungry going through the water. A full wipe there, a Mind Freak puts them in a dangerous position, Slays. Another run coming through, it's a little bit delayed, but they have the numbers, they have the position to be able to make this work. Look at the scurry, Mind Freak are trying to hustle in a position to contest. Three dead again, Dino the last alive. Chiefs are on for a fourth year. They certainly are, and look how comfortable Madzi was there. He was bottom mid on Bazaar, no one took a shot at him. That's how much control Chiefs have of this game right now. Mind Freak can't allow players to just be Chilling out down a market, looking at the fruit, taking a couple of pot shots. Now you've got to shut those players down. I mean, you're coming into the first game of the first series. It's the Chiefs and Mind Freak, and Chiefs are about to win this 5-1 if they get one more capture. That is a statement. We question Chiefs coming into this. Would they be in a form where they could return to that glory they held in split one? They are looking like it. Yeah, and now a killing spree for Berserk there. He's certainly hungry as well. So many players on the Chiefs are fragging out quite a lot. Moving through, Junior caught out, does manage to survive, but here comes another collapse from the Chiefs. They just seem to be collapsed, 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 get a kill. They just push together as a unit, never caught alone. I mean, it's a case of outmaneuver and outnumber, and the Chiefs are just overwhelming. Mind Freak, a return sweep, though. They get all four members of Chiefs down momentarily. Overshield onto the chest to Dino. We start. We want to see that Alpha Dog come to play. Yeah, Alpha Dog, the ex Direwolf Dino. He's usually one of those star slayers that you need, putting up big numbers, and a little bit of a slow start for him, unfortunately. Another flag on the move, though, so we'll have to see how that one plays out. Now with Junior, finds himself a dog in that bar and cops it in the face. He goes down. Madzi, tasty little double kill there, but does fall. Now on board with Slays. Top fragging on the team. Will be able to stop this flag. He is getting shot from behind. Dino trying to get that flag in. Now it's four to two. Three minutes left on the clock. Can Mind Freak bring it back? Three minutes to tie it up, but Chiefs only need the single kill to close this one out. So it's again, backs against the wall for Mind Freak here in this first map. They don't want to give an inch right now. It feels like they've come back into this map just a little bit. The Slays are coming together. The Chiefs aren't moving as freely as they were moments ago, and this is where they need to start striking while the iron's hot. Yeah, I touched on the Chiefs' efficiency before, but Mind Freak getting out Slade pretty heavily now. But as soon as that opportunity came to get that flag moving, they rallied it through, and maybe that's the leadership from Junior and Nantes in their comms as well, going, making sure we don't give up those opportunities. We get those kills, we've got to get the flag moving.
Four players down once again for Mine Free. That's what the third, fourth time this match. That's, I mean, that's insane. The Chiefs are bringing some real heat. Two rockets there from Berserk, finding two kills. Might have been a lineup for Slays, unfortunately, but there's so much damage he just dished out. Enough to force Mine Free out of that position. Chiefs will keep running things through. That was a very near run onto the platform. Yeah, now on board with Dino in the flag, not wasting any time. There's two minutes left on the clock, so they still have time to do it. But they want to get the flag moving now and not rush it. They've got to take their time and get their slaves, but he does get called out and shut down. Cleared out of the base, and now the Chiefs pushing out. Ninjistics caught in the bar a little bit there, and the call out comes. Didn't even challenge. He had complete faith in his teammates to be able to clear him out. Didn't even go in. Well, Overshield by Benji, looking to snake it away, but he dies before he can connect it with his chest. Those dynamos going hard. Mind Freak finding a bit of a reprieve. They take 50% of the Chiefs' roster out of play, but the respawns to come through. They can't make anything of this opening that they had. This is getting dangerously close for Mind Freak to be able to bring this one back. Yeah, that clock, I mean, the nerves start to set in a little bit. You know, you say, hey, we've got three minutes, boys. We've got plenty of time. Hey, boys, we've got two minutes, plenty of time. A minute 30, oh, God, oh, God. And suddenly the sweat starts... Uh, perspiring over their heads as the Chiefs apply that pressure and Madzi going down on that grapple doing his best to stay alive there now with Madzi again off the respawn 21 and 14 <laughs> three players on Chiefs 21 kills 20 bomb club well, 78 odd kills for the Chiefs it's really impressive no one hitting even remotely close to 20 I say that Benji's about to get there if you can find kills at range but no he's dead unfortunately Madzi is there a trade back courtesy of Junior this is getting scrappy we're down in that final minute here that's two caps you need in less than 50 seconds yeah it's a very tall ask in my opinion Panda but these guys lots of veterans on the Mind Freak roster so we'll just have to leave it in their hands see if they can bring it back but the Chiefs looking very dangerous right now I mean, Beeson, he's the only one that's not in the 20-bomb squad, but he's got 15 assists. Another full four-man wipe on the Mind Freak. Chiefs are coming into this. They're a team that rides and thrives off the passion. If they are getting vocal, if they're feeling themselves in it, they are one of the most dangerous teams in the region, and they are feeling themselves here. Yeah, I mean, talking about vocal, the thing is they're locked in. It's silence. It's like, nah, we're just... This is, this is just game one. Like, we're not, we're not even thinking about you boys. We're already thinking about the next team we're coming up. It's just locked and loaded going in. That Spanker about to spawn them up. But look at that, the Chiefs, the clock. I don't think the Mind Freak's going to be able to do it. Map number one goes to the Chiefs. Uh, another full wipe into the close of the map. They just stand still. They know that they've got it unlocked. They don't need to go and force anything. That's just three seconds left and everyone's dead. Look, just... You know, stretch the fingers, take a bit of a breather, get ready for map two. Yeah, listen, it is the first map of this land, right? There's three days of Halo, so you can forgive Mind Freak from having a little bit of a slow start there, but they were in it until that about halfway point. They were slaying evenly, they were capping evenly, but then all of a sudden something happened to the Chiefs and they just did amazing. They were working together as a squad. Every time the flag was moving, they were never alone. There was people um, putting pressure on those um, overextenders that were trying to um, stop that flag. I mean, it sort of hit that, what, 2-1 point, and it was just Chiefs with the slay control, the sandbox control, the objective control. They were well and truly in charge of bizarre CTF there for the majority of it. They hit that threshold and they said, look, we're, we can just burn the clock. We don't have to force anything silly. But I mean, going into our next map where you remove that objective, that's where things get dicey. I mean, just look at it. They were slaying like absolute demons. There was a, it, it felt like there was a lack of presence from Mind Freak. A little bit, a little bit towards the second half of that game. But I mean, the momentum was just kind of in the Chiefs' favor. I mean, it started off with that overkill from Slays. I mean. Everyone was talking about um, him stepping up and putting on a show. The analysts were talking about him quite a lot. And the first game, no, I don't even think there was a flag cap at that point and getting himself an overkill. So certainly showing up for his squad. But the veterans on Mind Freak, they'll just brush that one off and they're already thinking about game two. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you got to remember, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. you got five maps potentially to play in total. There's every possibility Chiefs could win the next one, and then Mind Freak comes in through and reverse sweeps it. So you got to play for the long game. You don't want to expend all your energy early on into a series because give an opening to a team like Mind Freak, they're going to exploit it.
Yeah, absolutely. And they were very good um, on the objective efficiency. Right. Every time they made a collapse, they made sure to get that flag moving. Not every time it made it way through, but they made sure that they committed as a squad. And sometimes that's the most important thing. It's like whatever those plays are, you need to commit as a team. Because even a bad play is backed by your full squad. Sometimes it can pan out. And good plays, if you don't, you go and I'm going to make a great play here. But you do it solo. Ain't happening, bro. You need to work together as a team. Yeah, I mean, we saw some some real highlight moments there throughout that map. I mean, your bulldog in the hands of Mads, he's sitting on the Mind Freak double doors, just raining hellfire down onto the player, trying desperately to run the flag home. Uh, I mean, they just the adjustments they made in those pinch moments, rotating in to make sure that the flag run was not going to be solidified. So it, it shows pro signs of promise. You, we're starting to see the Chiefs that we know they could be but they need to keep that going. They've got an entire weekend to keep proving that. Yeah, and there was a little bit of a wait for the first map, but not wasting any time. We're jumping into the second one here. CTF Bazaar, lots of slays going on, a lot of objective action going, but once you remove that objective aspect, it's all about the slays, and you can concentrate on the small talk. I'm with you, push out back off you need. It's like calling players out and moving throughout the map and just working as a squad. And I think that that's something that Mind Freak has really been concentrating on um, in their scrims and their practices. And I mean, going into our second map in, in the near future, we're looking at Catalyst Slayer. It's, it's one of those things, there are a lot of long angles as we jump on into it. Already off the rip, you can see a lot of early contests. Benji being shot at, dipping out of danger, the players, but unfortunately for Chiefs Beaston, he meets too much resistance. He does, but I mean, off the rip there. Everyone's keen to get those two frags out of that back pocket. They just lob him across the map. And now with Berserk here, putting some lovely shots onto Dino there, engaging two players and doesn't take a lot of um, um, fire himself. Junior shutting down Berserk there, maybe grabbing that skewer up there. It's just sitting up there, a little, little cheeky little goodie for them to sco uh, scoop up and get some no-scopes potentially. Now with Dino, he had a bit of a rough start game one as one of the Star Slayers on the Mind Freak roster. So kind of looking at him, but he's grappling straight in. He's not wasting any time. I mean, you need to keep your head on a swivel on a map like Catalyst. There's just so many different angles that you can be contested from that you're not even thinking about, and all of a sudden, you're being overwhelmed by the numbers. So already you can see Mind Freak playing a little bit slower, trying to test the waters. But, I mean, Chiefs have proved that in these clutch situations, they know how to play both the fast and the slow game. Benji, with that skill, just keeps being denied the scope and looking around that energy sword platform, can't find anything as his teammates keep falling. Yeah, and that skewer, I mean, it is kind of underestimated. It can be so dirty. Look at that nose go, because lining up. He believed, and you've got to back yourself in those kinds of situations with those weapons. The ammo is there to be used, not waiting for the perfect shot. Sometimes you just got to shoot your shot, and Beeston hiding in the corner there and pushing on through, hiding in the cubby. He does get taken down. Seconds there if he wants it, but no. Gets the trade in there. Two for two trade there. Yeah, in those situations, you 100% take that, but it, it, it feels a little bit frantic what we're seeing out of Mind Freak. They're playing off the back foot, Chiefs still determining a lot of that momentum. So if Mind Freak can establish themselves a bit of a foothold in the map, they can look to play their game, establish that control back and deny it from the Chiefs right Ooh. now, though. Unfortunately, Jessic drops down into the waiting arms of two. <laughs> two, three, and four. You saw the fourth player up at the back, so the Chiefs just moving around as a huge squad. And it's like, how do you come up against that? As Even as a duo, you got your two buddies there, but four BRs is better than two. Beeson with that overshield as well. Getting away with it cleanly. Madzi going, is there one for me? But no, it's already been picked up. Now moving through. Benji shutting that one down. That overshield didn't really amount to much, Panda. Yeah, unfortunately not. It will be otherwise an attempt at an injury there. Unfortunately not quite working out. You've got to have a bit more shield if you're going to be looking for that play. Berserk still hitting headshots there. Ripping players of mine freak apart. He's on the hunt for Junior. He's going to find Dino. He's going to try and finish Junior, but can't. It's scrappy. It's incredibly scrappy right now. I mean, scrappy, but Berserk there. He was engaging Junior and he goes to cut that angle off and Dino was there. He instantly changed targets, put in a couple of bursts and then went back to Junior. He's just so locked in about putting pressure down. He wasn't worried about, hey, I've got to kill Junior, then I'll kill Dino. No, it's like I'll put damage in the boats and I'll rely on my teammates to come in and clean them up. The two kills there for the Chiefs. They're going to try and keep that lead as large as possible. Six now, but it could change momentarily, and it will, in fact, Berserk drop in, in jest. It's the Repulsor across the bridge, looking to try and make some play, but he's got the safety option to back out. 
No, and now jumping on board to the beast in here, <laughs> using that grapple, spider man <laughs> across. No way home for that guy. Moving on through now, Junior going six and seven right now. A lot of assists in his back pocket, but scoreline pretty much even, I would say, for the difference. But this early on in the game, it's kind of, they're feeling each other out a little bit. It's a halfway point across that 30 kill mark when things really start picking up. But uh, Chief's looking pretty strong. Yeah, Benji, we, we did uh, see him on the, the kill feed connect with that skewer. Unfortunately, we didn't get the, the kill itself. But look, at least we get it seeing some use. Berserk, though, currently leading the scoreboard by a significant margin, 12 to 6 at the moment. He's running away with the kills. He's going to find himself yet another a 13th. What more can he achieve here? He's on the hunt for these kills. The overshield is well secured once again by the Chiefs. Now, yeah, Berserk feeling good. 13 and 6. Fresh OS down to a sliver already gone through, but you get, sometimes it's just asset denial. I mean, if you can't utilize that OS, you're gonna make sure the other team doesn't. Look at that pressure coming in. He does get taken down in the respawn screen for him. Now with Father Benji, seven and five currently. Scoreline is completely tied up. Both of these teams, Mind Freak bouncing completely back from that map one and they're bringing it to him. They completely wipe the Chiefs, reset their position and look to take advantage of it. And it gives them that opportunity looking for it. Unfortunately, Berserk, he's back up and in play. He's going to take Junior down, keep that lead out, extended by two again. Berserk, he's just not slowing down. No, he's not. And that's what you want to see from a player like him. Very, very passionate, very hot-blooded. You get him fired up and he is the most dangerous player on the server. Firing on all cylinders currently. But he's going 15 and 8. But Mind Freak keeps Keeping up just fine, they're keeping things even despite Berserk going off. Yeah, I mean, just the, the, that solo effort being nullified by the spread that we're seeing out of Mind Freak. Every single player is contributing as best they possibly can right now. Just tucked in, shields depleted once again, trying to hide, get out of danger. The nade spam as well, just tucked in. They haven't finished off this kill, so there's a chance that the pinch could come in. The pinch is coming. Beeston wasn't quite ready for it there. He falls down. Madzi casts his curse. He goes down as well. A few players on the Chiefs. That's a third one down. Slays. Last one alive now with Junior moving through. Veteran of the Halo scene. Last ANZ regional champion as well. Looking to grab this map into the bag. And they've kept things so tight this entire game. It could go either way at this point, Panda. I mean, Mind Freak had, a mo had the lead there for a moment, but it was just yoinked back by the Chiefs who reclaim it for themselves. Tight Tied up still, 37 to 37, another overshield in play. Last one wasn't great, but if Junior can get that on the chest and put it to work, this could be the gap that Mind Freak need. Yeah, but he just gets melted. So many Chiefs players applying that pressure. They're just Junior, 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 taking him out. He doesn't do anything with that overshield. He just gets shut down. I mean, it was talked about in the desk. The Chiefs have made a name for themselves being able to play the sandbox around power weapons, not even just getting them, but being able to react to them being in the hands of their opponents. And we see that again, all players in position to nullify that overshield. And we are getting to the final stretch here. The Chiefs need nine more. Mind Freak tailing them by two. This is going to be a close run to the finish. I don't think my heart could take a 49-49 finish, but it is kind of panning out in that direction now with Berserk. And he's almost on that 20 bomb and hasn't even died 10 times yet. He'll be looking to close this one out. And it's like, boys, we're not going to drop any more kills. We're going through. Let's just get this map in the bag. Five kills to go. Madzi will find one before he falls at range. Beast in there to help contribute. Two players down. Mind Freak again have to try and reposition to get these respawns in so they can make that deep cut run going into this final few kills. Looking at it. No, Junior stings around too long. Gives Berserk his 19th. This is getting dangerously close. Benji falls as well. They are just lining up for the Chiefs to knock down. Yeah, now Berserk with that skewer. Only one more kill. They were completely even at 40 point mark with the Chiefs. They just hit the NOS button, close things out, and they grab themselves map number two. Chiefs, they're dangerous, Panda. Map two, a little bit closer than map one. Wouldn't be that hard to argue, but Again, it was a case of dictating pace. The Chiefs are the ones doing it. There was a moment where they were throwing off Hilter. Looked like Mind Freak were back into it. They had the lead for about 10 seconds. Now, I was starting to think maybe the momentum was going to shift in Mind Freak's favor. They were, tra they, they were with them, but they were trailing just a little bit. And sometimes they go, hey, we're only one round of slaves behind. We get that round of slaves. It's like, nice, boys. We've tied things up. And that momentum can sometimes carry you into the lead. But Mind Freak never kind of went that next level. They're kind of just, you know, treading water almost. But then Chiefs, they just hit the gas and boom, they're gone.
Uh, I got some bad news for you, Justin. The only but. thing momentum is carrying is the desk right now. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, not being a player here at this event. Look, he's doing his phenomenal job. He's absolutely killing it on the desk. But you see that mullet, he looks like a thoroughbred racehorse. Oh, I didn't dude. realize this was the Melbourne Cup. He, he was nervous, but I mean, the guy's an absolute natural. Looking at it though, look, Zerk denied the 20 bomb, but who cares? He got the win with the team. It's about playing for it. And I mean, just look at the kills. They were raining in left and right for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, the, the chat that Berserk had with me last night about not dropping a map, coming in hot, certainly putting his money where his mouth in that situation. Going massive. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be honest, my uh, my Chiefs prediction may be stirring a little bit of heat coming in this bit. Berserk, outside the uh, hotel last night, staring absolute daggers at me. Didn't say a thing, but I was shaking in my boots. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's what you want. Even the night before, it's like, nah, are we going out for beers, boys? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going back and I'm looking at VODs, I'm going over maps and I'm just locked in. And that just seems like what the Chiefs were doing. They're just so ready for today. They came in early, getting themselves nice and prepared. And they've started off 2-0 so far. I mean, the, the prospect being as we go into oddball recharge, Chiefs could kick off this entire tournament with a 3-0 start off the back of this next map. Mind Freak find themselves in the back foot. They need to win the next three to pick up the victory here. A reverse sweep, even at the best of times, is a, an absolute endurance run. It can, it can be, but the thing is that although Chiefs are looking really strong, Mind Freak are right there with them. Yes, that 40 kill mark, this thing started snowballing a little bit. Yes, in the CTF, it was kind of a couple of flags and then Chiefs took off, but Mind Freak have already proven that they can hang with these guys. So we just got to see if they can carry that throughout the entire game. You can't be really good for half a game. That's not how you win series. And as we're looking to jump into Oddball on recharge, I mean, you look at the shock rifle coming into play, you're looking at that active camo, maybe, just maybe, looking at the Needler King coming into play for Mind Freak as well, though. Yeah, that pick missed. I certainly hope it makes an appearance. Starting things out with the Berserk, coming off hot of that Slayer game, checking so many angles there. Junior caught out. Will he get a around that corner? He does. That... Uh, that uh, camo will be spawning up very shortly. Have to see what's going to happen with that one. But Berserk, he hasn't really moved from this position. He's just going through, responding to those call-outs. Father Benji now moving through. Cops a few grenades and he goes down. And that oddball in the red pipe situation. Junior able to um, take care of that setup. Look at him trying to establish some, some control. Obviously, a best of three in this map alone. In the oddball, they want to set themselves up to hold it as long as possible because the contest will and well and truly be coming. Majestic's great nade through maintenance bay. He shuts down the push, but he finds himself overwhelmed. Chief's hot on his heels. Yeah, and I love this play from Ninjistics there. He saw those two players coming up, and he just went, you know what, I just need to buy time. That's my job. They started rotating the ball, and he's like, I'm just going to dip out. I'll take a cheeky angle, and I'll rain things out. And even though he went down, he still bought precious seconds for his squad. It's exactly it, Beast, and holding the objective, looking to try and keep it as long in hands of Chiefs as possible. Shock Rifle there as well, looking to provide some overwatch. Benji spotted, but unfortunately, oh, just grabbing it He's off the ledge. One finger in the eye hole of that oddball, and it's like, whoop, scoop that one up. Very clutch from there. I thought he was going to let it slip through his fingers there, but no, very clean hands, no butter fingers from Berserk. Unfortunately, he will die anyway. You know, Mind Freak in the position, unlocking him. And well, unfortunately, Ingestix on Mind Freak's attempt to reposition the oddball shut down as well. So it looks like it is going to remain out in the middle, open by the batteries. Junior go, tries his luck, trying to get to long haul, does get it there, but unfortunately falls. He does fall that oddball in a pretty, pretty nice position for the Mind Freak guys there. They are starting to rotate, but we can see through the map here, those red players from the Chiefs starting the claps on these players. And we are on board with Beast and currently working together with Scott Jr. in a very tough spot right now, trying to contest that camo. And here comes Berserk. He'll scoop that one up, slams it onto his chest. And now oh. he can't be seen, but he cops the plasma now and he gets shut down. Two quick kills onto the Chiefs. Mind Freak trying to exert some sort of control. But you look at the score, it's tied up at the moment. So. Mind Freak still getting hands on the objective where it really counts. It's going to sit there on the ground. Active camo wasn't even committed. Slammed onto the chest, but Chiefs still have it. That is amazing. The fact that 
um, berserk didn't get burnt with that and it was left on the ground and it was like, beast then, this is where the camo is, you go scoop it up. I don't know if they saw me not slam that one in. And now he's invisible. And look at the pace change as well. It was super aggressive, lots of scrappy fights going on, but as soon as that camo's in, very patient, look at this. Jumping onto this player here, able to take him out very cleanly. He does get called out though. Such a critical kill. Dino, well placed grenade, takes the camo out of play. And it will be the odd ball in hand for Junior. And Jastix had that shock rifle, got one before he fell. Dino though now finds it for himself, dropping Berserk with that headshot. If he can put this to work, establish some Overwatch from Mind Freak, they could keep this rolling. Yeah, and scoreline pretty even currently. Mind Freak got a, got a good lead though, so certainly not letting that Slayer game get to their heads. Their game faces are very much on. Dino with that strike rifle, not able to connect on the headshot. Now Beeson picking up the montage maker, plenty of ammo to play with as well. Up on that red window, finds Ninjistics, just backs him off a little bit. You jump out that position, it's so powerful, so many sight lines, but you make yourself a pretty easy target as well, Panda. Man, you Australians, it's uh, it's pronounced ninjestics, not ninjistics. Uh, it's, it's an E, not an A. I speak it of ninjestics. He goes to town, finds slays. It looks like Mind Freak as well, finding some ground. They set themselves up with Dino on the objective. Doing very well currently. Dino sitting pretty, just getting his reps in. He's got to keep those biceps nice and pumped up and holding that old ball. He's got a lot of slays this game too, and he's currently working on his objective. Next camo coming up, and I like this. The Chiefs, they weren't putting a lot of pressure on that ball, but it's because they're concentrating on making sure that they got that next camouflage so they could break that setup, and that's exactly what they're doing. Another, uh, you know, active cam on the hands of Chiefs. Unfortunately, Madzi dies with the tail end of it. But you look at the gap already. It's a decent about 25 extension there in favour of Mind Freak. Unfortunately, that is about to start closing. But they could just scrap this one out. They could slow it down, just try and keep the oddball out of the hands of Chiefs. They are trying, but it's it's not working too well. Yeah, look at this collapse, Beast. And last one alive from the Chiefs there. Lovely collapse from Mind Freak. That's what you want to see. Able to break that setup open straight away. And now they're back on the ball, getting some points. Berser uh, Slay's there, doing his best to stay alive. Does get called out. And it seems both squads are doing so incredibly well at working together. I'm not seeing a lot of solo players, people giving up their lives needlessly. They're always working together. And, and ooh, ooh, lovely stick there. That's what you need. You need to get those trade kills, don't you? Oh, we just caught the tail end of Majestic's punting. Uh, or beasting out into the water as well. Lovely little kill there into the drink. But right now, they are trying to get those spawns back into a better position to try and contest this objective. Final 23 points needed for Mind Freak. Benji with the beat down on the Berserk. They lose one. Make that two as Slays gets involved. Like I said, I stick by it. Black and blue, no one's getting out of this pool unscathed. <laughs> Certainly a lot of pummeling going around currently. Now Chiefs, good opportunity to them to, um, to close up that gap, but there is a minute 30 seconds on the clock, and those watching from home and in the crowd, in oddball, once you have that ball in hand, that countdown timer does stop, so you can bring that back, and sometimes time can be a factor. Looking to try and deny Mind Freak a chance at the reverse sweep. Chiefs getting hands on the ball. The reset had come through. Beeston is making his run for it. Berserk falls, but the trade comes in the form of Dino dropping to Slays. They aren't missing out on these opportunities. A double there for Slays. Majestics falls. Two players out for Mind Freak, meaning that Chiefs can start the reposition onto this skull, and they are getting dangerously close to tying this up. How? Two players from the Chiefs there chilling out in the B area on the batteries really vulnerable position to grenades. They both got out alive and managed to rotate that wall over into um, the gold area. And Slice, how did he get a kill in that situation? 2v1 and he managed to turn that out into a trade. Mind Freak fighting tooth and nail here to deny the shutout, not wanting it to go down to 3-0. They keep the odd ball moving, they keep the points racking up. Final 15 before they close out this first round. They had three players of the Chiefs down. They lose two of their own though. Momentum stalls, Slays finds Benji. It's a full wipe onto Mind Freak again. <laughs> That's certainly a sweep that you want. Now rotating that ball through. And look at the Chiefs, they're rotating that ball and all the other guys were looking over his back to make sure that you could get away with that one cleanly. Rotating it through into the blue. Ben in a really nice position, but Mind Freak immediately approached pressure. And three players down for the Chiefs. Mind Freak find the full wipe to boot. I think Junior may have just jumped into the water. Uh, well, listen, if you have four players 
coming at you. You're going to be jumping in the water, but you know who's in the water? The shark. Madsy was going after him. And that score one is ticking over. Mind Freak looking like they're going to close things out. And for those that aren't familiar with Halo Infinite and Oddball, you do need two rounds to close this one out. So that's just the first step to taking their first map in this series. And the wild thing, Chiefs need the reverse sweep to deny the reverse sweep. They need to win the next two rounds of OB. And then they can look to go and focus on the next map. But right now, a great start from the Chief. Madsy finds two before being stuck by Ninjastix. They are trying to control some of the center portion of this map. Right now, though, Chiefs finding some massive opening kills. They certainly are. And you know what's really interesting about the Chiefs is that Berserk was so hot in the previous game, he's having a little bit of a slow game this one. But because there's so many, so much star power on the Chiefs roster, someone else could step up, and that person has been Slays on that squad. Now with Madzi, though, he's got something to prove himself. They've got an oddball. They're very well set up. Berserk's just chilling back B Ben and racking up those points, and Madzi doing everything he can to hold those back. Look at that mind free collapse. All four players in there. They do lose one after the fact, a stick coming through once again. But I mean, look at Slay's numbers, 19 and 13. I mean, that's the sort of numbers you'd be expecting coming into the third round of Oddball, but he's stacking up the kills. We do see that shock rifle in the hands of Junior. He just can't find a target and connect with it. Has to back himself off, goes for the repulse to play in towards long haul. Wants to reposition to make it work. That's, and that's what you could do with his shock rifle sometimes. You, you, change, you get pressured, you change positions and peak at different angles. But now he has some help, he can push on through and try and break this setup. Hits with a repulse, Beeson gets taken down. Now, now Junior not able to connect on that first big shot. 180s, misses one of the shots. Oh. Will he be able to get him anyway? He does! Reversal on the slays, what was he doing? Uh, look, I think he is going to be absolutely spewing caught, having to reload, didn't have the ammo to go for the fight. And hey, hey, look, it was it was not pretty. It was not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. Shield's gone, Dino drops as well. Shock rifle's still in the hands of Junior, but it, it, unfortunately, uh, that long range weapon not great in oh, close combat. Just not enough thunder shock in that. You needed a thunderbolt if you wanted to get the melee after that one. Scoreline pretty much tied up currently, but Mind Freak, they have to take this round if they want to um, bring themselves back into this game. Um, sorry, the Chiefs um, need to bring this one back if they want to stay alive during this game. Junior called out, Beeson finding himself one, and still with that shock rifle, got quite a bit of ammo to play with as well, Panda. I mean, the one thing to take away from this, obviously Chiefs having that 2-0 lead already in the series means they've got a bit of breathing room, a bit of a safety net going into the next couple of maps if we need to. But the active camo on play for Chiefs once again. What can you find with it? Shots on to Junior, but it's not enough to secure the kill. Madzi will find one Junior just lurking towards orange pipes there. This might be a bit of a pinch mind freak collapsing it on and Slays goes down. He does, and he did. He had that camo, didn't really get a lot of kills with it, but he was hanging around kind of the mid part of the map, which is very open, and the amount of information that you can gather with your team, and sometimes information, it's the currency of Halo. You make your, you like build your plays around it, and although not a lot of kills going in favour, he certainly would have been able to create some plays for his team. I mean, communication feeds coordination. Obviously, if you're feeding exactly. that info through to your teammates, you know where spawns are coming up. Players are rotating. You can adjust accordingly, but the melee misses. <gasps> no, Dino, you can't Dino. be doing that in LAN. That's very unfortunate for him. I'm sure a veteran oh. like him. Father Benji, nice little no-scope onto Beast in there. Who finds himself another. Will he be able to shut it down? Does get the trade and killing spree for him. Father Benji, he's showing up. 20 bomb club. All this time, Ninjastix has the odd ball in hand. They're just racking the points up, looking to take this a little bit further in the series. My God, Slays, that was a solid attempt, but unfortunately, he hits nothing but the dirt. Looking for the shots on Junior Falls. Unfortunately, not connecting the melee. Halfway through the round and halfway to picking this map up. For a moment there, it started slowing down quite, quite a lot with that camo, but it has been scrappy the last 30 seconds, and sometimes that change of pace can favor one, one team over another, and there's Beast in there scooping up that camo, and he looks like he's going to get away with that one cleanly, which is really going to play into the Chiefs' favor. They're trailing a little bit in the score department. Now it's time to bring that back. They've got the goodies. They've set up with the oddball. They've got that camo, and I 
you know, looking at Beeson here to make a play. Not quite sure if Ninjasix realized the Chiefs were actually rotating in behind him through long haul with the odd ball itself, but they pinch in, shut him down, and they are again trying to close that gap. Dino tries his luck, but unfortunately he's not good enough to take out what was two players in long haul. The rotate Mind Freak with a heavy commit, Beeson falls. Berserk dancing around, trying, but the nade there effective and denying the push from Mind Freak. They lose any chance at the commit. <laughs> Fantastic flank from Madzi there. Like it was a 2v2 situation, they're kind of fighting face to face, but Madzi rounding back from the B band going through and just able to collapse on those players. They didn't even have time to turn around before oh. they shut down. Look, I respect that he was trying to get down bottom hydro, but the thrust a little bit too far. Out into the drink, reset onto the odd ball as well. There is potential that could come back to bite them. <laughs> Potentially. Scoreline, tied up at the moment. The Chiefs, they were trailing, but they've closed things back. They've brought things a bit more respectable. Reset. Boys, what do we do about the rest of the map here? Mind Freak scooping that one up, trying to rotate it through. Ninjistics are getting called out. Not able to get through the balcony window there. That's unfortunate. That oddball just sitting there, down there. Such a dangerous spot. 20 seconds until that next camo as well, Panda. But the shock rifle is up and in hands, Junior. What can he find? Unfortunately, not much. He's going to reposition, look for a better angle to try and find some kills. Spots Beeston, finds the kill, avoids the nade too. He's out of danger. Up onto that platform outside batteries. He's going to be able to get the oddball but again, unfortunately not quite quick enough to get away with it. No, no, I mean, that's such a tough spot to get out of. Everyone is just like, he's in batteries. And out come the grenades to just clean you out. Lots of players doing everything they can to stay alive. It's a very, very frag-heavy game of oddball. There's that pink mist. Hopefully see kill with that one, but he's locked in with a BR, making sure he gets his damage across map as well, and just locked in, making sure that he's applying pressure. The Mind Freak trying to collapse, trying to rotate through, but that ball that's getting rotated around to the A side, it looks like, Panda. But the thing is, we're getting dangerously low on the clock right now. We're heading down to the final 40 seconds, and with the lead as it is, this could come down to the clock. In fact, most likely will beast in for two. Sets the Chiefs up for the hold that they're potentially looking for, but they were so far detracted from the objective. Objective Junior might shut this one down, but no, he's not good enough at the tail end. Madzi reclaims the odd ball, has support now. The respawn's coming through to back him up in this position, but this is still not the most solid hold. Yeah, this late into the game, 20 seconds on the clock, all tied up. It is so important to value your life. You do not want to be the first one to go down. Shots coming, ringing out from Dino there. 25 and 25, 15 assists, doing so well. Now the Chiefs with the ball, they're racking things up. They take the lead in the last 10 seconds of this game. Mind Freak scoops it up. It's completely even, eight seconds to go. Who's gonna grab this ball? All players are collapsing down on it. Five seconds left on the clock. And look at this, the Chiefs, one point advantage currently ticks down and they clutch it up. A match of a single point. We are tied up here in the odd ball. One to go. One to go. And the Chiefs deny the reverse sweep. One to go for Mind Freak. And there is a chance. The <laughs> dreams and hopes stay alive here in the first series. But my God, what a round of oddball. That was bonkers. And you could see on the cam there, they were all smiles and all us. Like, boys, that was a close one. All right, let's not do that again. And they keep themselves alive in this oddball game. Still ticking, still rocking. This is a huge round of oddball to be played out. I mean, it was heavily contested throughout the objective, heavily contested on those, those power utility pieces, the active camo in. Chiefs, I, they've had so much control over the active camo this map. They certainly have, and it's so, so important on this map. That camo, you can just gain so much information. You can make really nice, cheeky plays moving on through. And the Chiefs, they clutch that last round up. Mind Freak, they start getting a little bit nervous because they're close to um, wrapping this game up. Active camo! Shock rifle result in the double kill there for Madzi, unfortunately. That is all as Benji does find him and claim the scalp junior. Unfortunately, just not quite hit on a swivel there. Oh my god, the repulse return to Sander Beeston. What a kill. Wow, what a play from him and a double kill to put himself into the 30 bomb club. He joins his teammate Madzi moving on through, scoops up the odd ball as well. Look at that, he cleans the house and goes, oh, well, I guess I'll pick up the odd ball too. Uh, there's no kills to find. I suppose they should play. Yeah, injected, I guess I'll pick it up. Rather goes have the shock <laughs> rifle out, but no, but he, right. he just goes and tosses it out to Oblivion. Guys, get the objective. Yeah. I want kills. <laughs> I want kills. I can't let Slays take all of them.
<laughs> Certainly. And sometimes a little bit of rivalry between your teammates. It's like, no, I'm going to be top frag this game. Give me the shock rifle. You hold the ball. Yeah, unfortunately, someone has to play the objective, but it's not going to be me. Someone else is going to do it. Blue Titan's going to be contested, but the support comes from Slays. Manzi falls to Benji. Slays might look for more if he can find it. He is on the hunt, rotating around. Does have support, though. And unfortunately, oh no, the repulse not quite as effective. Not but able look, to it play that regardless. ball either. That is so critical there, that ball. Usually you toss it straight over your shoulder and you yeet it down into the water, but no, not able to play that ball. And then Slays, look at this setup that the Chiefs have just grabbed themselves. Yeah, I mean, whether it was intentional or not, it stopped the player from resetting the odd ball. It Slays, resets the odd ball, sends Junior into oblivion, and now Chiefs can reposition. Yeah, you saw what Slays did there. He wasn't even engaged yet, and it's like, the communication comes in. Hey, we're getting collapsed. Throws the ball straight out. No chances. You cannot give up a setup. You've just got to throw it. It's just too big of a risk. And he was able to grab himself a kill as well because he wasn't holding the old ball when he engaged that player. I mean, look, Slays, 42-28. There is still a lot of time and objective to be played here on recharge. He is on for a 50 bomb if he can make it work. Ingestix, last one alive, trying to reset and deny this grab onto the odd ball, but he goes down to Dino. Now the one to try and hold off as the respawn's trickling through for Mind Freak. But Chiefs, they've got the lead. That's all they need to hold. The lead is certainly the position that you want to be in, um, but Mind Freak, they're trailing, they're trailing in the kills department. Let's be real a little bit, Panda. But they've been very objective efficient. They've already got one round in the bag. They only narrowly lost that previous one. So Chiefs having to work a lot harder for their points. Yeah, look, not the kind of massage that I think Ninjastix would have wanted to be receiving there from Slays. He falls, unfortunately, no shields, wasn't able to regenerate. Oddball in hand, points sticking on through for the Chiefs, looking to rotate it out to somewhere more secure. We'll hand it off, and look, Manzi dies, but he gives it over to Beasted, who will, will also fall. Yeah, and just look at this. All the players just collapsing on here. Here comes that bait and switch going through. Now Ninjastix hiding in the corner there. Berserk goes down, lovely position from Junior here, the C player, such a powerful position. You can cut off angles and you can keep putting in damage, but he does get collapsed on. Critical kill there for the Chiefs to get Junior off that play. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the thing about recharge, obviously, given that the middle of the map is so open, you're rarely finding yourself in a 1v1 Ninjastix. Plays the ball once again, denying the Chiefs. That's got to be frustrating. Sometimes it is, but that's just the, the way that the game plays. You can't get frustrated when the ball is played because you just expect players to do it, and you almost get ready to it. It's like, hey, we're going to break them off this setup. They're going to play the ball, get ready for it to spawn up. Things slow just a little bit, oddball. Not in the hands of anyone. Dino finds a fight, loses it, unfortunately. Manzi shutting down the alpha. Junior tries his best, but that's a, what, the fourth, fifth time we've seen Mind Freak attempt to take the oddball off spawn and just fail. Yeah, a little bit, but that, that camo as well, Dino sitting in the corner, and Mads, he just saw straight through, and it's like, I can see you hiding there. You can sit on that box, you're going to stay there because you're going in the respawn screen. Now on board with Madzi still, going join that 30 bomb club as well, but look at the assist on the Chiefs roster. That is a boatload. I want 50 apiece for Slays and Madzi. If it was a chicken nugget meal, it would be pretty solid, honestly, but... Look, at the minute, it's still anyone's game. There is still room for both teams to pick up the win. Madzi on for the killing spree, looking to do more damage than Jessix and Slays actually trade there with an aid after the death. But the oddball, it's still in the hands of Beast and the points still racking up halfway here to closing out this series. Yeah, listen, if you're Beast and you're sitting pretty, you have Madzi over in long hole C flat, you have um, Berserk over there in the red pipes and you're just able to rack up so many points. You've got such a buffer and Madzi doing Doing his job there, sitting on the plat. His job, putting damage, apply pressure, and stop those collapses from taking him down. But then Chistix and the rest of the Mind Freak guys, they just push in. They get the oddball back in hand, but Chiefs, they're always good for a couple when the shots are on. Oddball kept down in Whirlpool. They should be able to pick it up for themselves. Benji, the last alive to try and reposition to get those spawns coming in a favorable position. Active camo coming up momentarily as well. Chiefs looking to coast this one to victory. Yeah, they're in very good position right now to close things out. But Mind Freak, there's still time to bring it back. And it's just this last round to go. So they just have to pull up those bootstraps and just get into it if they don't want to lose this game. Now with Slays, he's just hit 50 kills. Oh my god. 51, the active camo there as well on his chest. He spots the back of Junior. 
and he's just going to absolutely mow him down, hitting the final 15 mark here. It's Chiefs. They have the positioning. They have the kills. They just need to keep that old ball in hand to rotate it through to victory. But the active camo, the push in slays. He's looking for more. Ring around the rosy. Can he find the kill? Well, yes, he can, but he falls for it. He, he, he got a trade, and he was getting collapse on this. Just so... Such good movement there. Using that pillar, the cutoff and angle from that second player, force out that trade in that situation. It was the best possible thing that he could do at that time. Right now, though, oddball in the hands of Mindfreak with 30 seconds on the clock. They're trying to reposition it, but that's dangerous territory if you're doing so, especially if Chiefs, they push in, go for the full court press, get the oddball in hand and start racking his points up for the one-two combo. Medzi has support there, looking for more, but his teammate shut down the oddball reset, but it's a double. No, unfortunately for the Mind Freak, they just overplay their heck cards. Yeah, and that oddball will get reset. 18 seconds left on the clock, but it does stop. So if Mind, Mind Freak can scoop up that ball, they can stop the clock from running out. But the Chiefs, they can just they can just bait that ball, keep getting slays, and they'll be able to close this one out. The last thing they want is hands on the ball. Medzi try to resist as the time ticks away. Chiefs, God, someone get a broom. It's a clean sweep. Unbelievable stuff from there. I mean, the Chiefs. They weren't happy about the predictions. They came in hot. Berserk said to me last night, we're not dropping a single map, bro. Word for word and off to a pretty good start. Look, man, true to his word. We'll see if that carries on. But I mean, what a way to start this tournament off. A 3-0. And look, it, there was a moment where you thought maybe Mindfreak could have brought it back. But they say, no, no, no. Look, you can have your one round of oddball. Obviously, charity is you know, tax deductible. but. They just, you know, they've done their good deed for today. Now it's nothing but victories. Yeah, but listen, this is day one, series one, right? And I think that although it went three to zero in favor of the Chiefs, plenty of times Mind Freak proved that they can hang. So it would be interesting to see how the rest of the weekend plays out and what they take away from that, that series. Maybe they go have a little bit of a team huddle, talk about things that are working, talking about the things that are not working, and maybe iron out a few of those kinks. I mean, it definitely felt like there was a bit of brain fog for Mind Freak. I mean, they were getting caught looking in the wrong direction. They were getting caught on these off angles. I mean, how many times did we see players die without even getting a shot off to the person that killed them because they were just looking off God knows where? So you got to wonder, maybe that's the sort of match that kicks them into gear going into their next matchup. Maybe, just maybe, we start to see the heat that we've, we've come to expect coming into Melbourne. Yeah, I'm, we've been highlighting both the teams, how they're feeling, their mental state, but I mean, slays. Shut the front door. 56 kills. Oh, unbelievable stuff from him. I mean, you talk about mental state. Slays is a mental state. The guy is just on lock, hitting his shots. 56 kills in the oddball. I mean, he started the first round of it. 19 kills under the belt. He is definitely going to be puffing his chest out, strutting off stage, walking across in a handshake. Yeah, good game, boys. It's like, but I'm better. Like, it's just that's that's. You got to believe in yourself and Slays. Not only believed, he manifested it. I mean, it's the difference. You got Sways and Slays coming to this tournament. There's an L in his name, but that's only because he's hand in the map. <laughs> Very solid pun there. I love it. Um, but the Chiefs coming out really, really hot. And Mind Freak, good showing from them as well, as we touched on already going through the highlights. There's plenty of big plays from both teams, but the Chiefs, they seem to just have more slaying power throughout. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion, you know, talking to the players, talking to the teams. A lot of people said, you know, if, if Chiefs dropped this series to Mind Freak, it was a write-off. They were going to be an absolute shutout for the rest of the tournament. They weren't even going to show up. They go and do exactly what you wanted them to do if you're a Chiefs fan. They take the 3-0, they make the statement and say, look, no one's mental is chalked here. We are here to win it. We want that spot at Orlando. Anyone stepping up to us has to bring their absolute A game. Otherwise, they're going to get put six feet under.